Catholic program, or at least designed by Catholics, that could be uh, used by others, uh, called Marriage Encounter, which deals with a relationship between the husband and the wife. Uh, and it uh, is a relationship that requires continual work. Continual work all the time, not just on the day of the wedding itself. Uh, and uh, you know, after some years, the program was designed for people who had been married at least seven years. Uh, they would uh, become a little frayed uh, because of the uh, activities uh, from day to day. The sparkle that they may have had at the wedding day, you know, it was a little uh, frayed and a little bit more routine. Uh, and uh, uh, they were somewhat, uh, you know, maybe a little bit bored sometimes uh, with things that were going on that they had to do. Uh, this could also happen, too, very often. In this country, uh, a lot of people have to live in one place and for bread. They have to live, they have to work somewhere else. And so the husband and wife would be divided for maybe a year or so, uh, each living separately. Uh, and of course, that relationship would be a little frayed, they have to sort of find themselves again. Or it also happens uh, sometime, too, when uh, all the children who were bubbly and we had lots of friends and the whole household was always uh, busy, uh, well, when the last child left, uh, the empty nest uh, it was a little let down, you know. And so the program was to designed to uh, help people communicate with each other uh, had, who had not, from day-to-day -day activity, things had become too routine. And so this was to encourage people to communicate not with the world, but with each other. And so people in that encounter were encountering their spouse. Uh, and so they talked and wrote to each other for that. Uh, Lent, uh, in some ways, has suggested to me that we have also a, an encounter. We also have uh, a relationship that we have to make uh, and work on. And that is our relationship between God and our own soul our own spirit. And you know, that relationship sometimes is very bright and very sparkling and very happy, especially in the beginning of one's uh, understanding of Jesus, understanding of God, if you're from another tradition even, that whole sense. Uh, but it tends after a while to be not quite as, uh, as uh, the desire that you may have uh, that uh, God is the center of my life. I will always praise him. I will always serve him. I will always keep him in my heart. That doesn't seem to have lasted some time. Things seem to be a bit more routine than that. You try to get Jesus, uh, God, in the center of your heart. Uh, and so there are distractions. So that relationship isn't always quite as bright as it was at one point or other. And you can't sing this hymn quite as well with the same force. Uh, so what are some of the distractions? Well, making bread is one. You have to work hard to get enough bread to keep your life and your family together. And you know, people put in 40 hours a week, 48 hours a week, 60 hours a week, sometimes a whole lot more, so that God sort of drifts away because you're so busy with other things to do. Uh, I don't know, has that ever happened to you, where you felt there were a lot of things going on? Uh, and also, sometimes, you know, if you open the newspaper, or turn on the TV, or watch uh, the uh, internet, or watch Twitter, uh, you get all sorts of things that are happening all over the world. And you know, you suddenly feel that there's a great sense of depression. So many of these stories are about somebody's problems, some difficulty, something wrong. Someone may fall off a horse or may fall from their car in some part of Afghanistan or Pakistan, and there's an article about it. It's found out, even though we don't live anywhere near there, and you have a whole series of these things, and after all, people begin to feel pretty depressed when they start looking at what's going on in the world because it becomes part, in a sense, of our burden. Uh, all the kingdoms of the world are given to us, uh, in a sense, uh, in some way. We have to fear them all. And, uh, well, you know, there's a lot of evil, a lot of force, a lot of anger. And uh, you can see that Jesus, when he was told, 
uh, all of these things are going to be given to you. Uh, and not only will you hear about them, we hear about everything, of course, we hear about all the things that are going on, but we don't have to run them. We don't have to do anything really about them. Uh, we don't have to go down to Pakistan and do this, that, or go off to uh, some place in uh, Nepal, or even down the street in the part of Berkeley, uh, to deal with the problems. Jesus didn't want to deal with the world in that sense. He had come for something else. Uh, and so uh, he told the devil to go away. I don't want these gifts, these kingdoms, and these things there at all. Uh, also, another thing that may interrupt your relationship, or at least some people's relationship, you want to get ahead, you want to be noticed, you want to be the first person in your group. Uh, that's a temptation that sometimes takes away people's interest in anything else. If you jump down from the temple uh, and are picked up, gee, you're going to be noticed. You're going to be noticed all the time. But, you know, that's not the kind of notice that you want. It may all be very okay for a week or so, but after a while, nobody remembers that anymore. And Jesus said, no, you worship God. You don't worship your own activity. You don't worship the things that you've done yourself. So bread and uh, uh, activities of the kingdom and also self interest. Those are not the things that are going to enable you to understand and keep that relationship with God open. You've got to work on the relationship between yourself and God. So, how to do that? Well, sometimes the best thing to do is to put down the shutters of your mind. Not just your eyes, but the shutters of your mind and put everything out. And just think about God quietly by yourself for five, ten minutes. Just drop everything out and think about God. And when that happens, when you are quiet in your own interior self, God will appear. Or at least the desire to love God will appear. And that will always happen. It won't last for long, but it will happen. And it will enable you to work on your relationship with God because that is what Lent and this whole life is about, working from time to time to understand God. And God is so beautiful. God is, God is so beautiful. He has recreated the whole of this universe and a much bigger universe than we ever thought. Nowadays, we understand galaxy upon galaxy uh, that God has done all these things. God is so beautiful, like a crystal, clear, without any flaw. And that presence in your life is a very consoling and a very important way in which you can rebuild your relationship to God, which is what this particular time of life, Lent, is about, so that we are ready uh, to all the time, not just for these 40 days, but all the time, to be open to the presence of God, because that relationship between our soul and God is a dual relationship, because God acts on us, as well as we act on God. We pray to God and ask, but God is acting on us too. God is also changing us. Uh, we may not see that, but God is always there. And if we work on that relationship, we become more in love with God, and it becomes less routine and less something that brings us closer to the way we should be and the way we want to be. Catholics have an advantage. We know the truth about many things. Other, country, other groups, other religions know the truth about many things too. And so we also want to have that sense of relationship between the soul and God as ours, but it's also other people's too. And so we want to make sure that we teach them to be quiet, the times we need to be quiet, need to be quiet, and to sit back and relax, relax. The shades of our mind keeping out the world for a while because we have to go back into the world and work with them too. Uh, we're going to have, this is an important weekend in some ways, because it's the weekend of election. People that are going to be baptized, have been preparing to be baptized, are going to go downtown, are going to cement the bishop and be appointed out as people that can be baptized. And they will be baptized, of course, during the vigil at the end of this time. So we have here, uh, from this parish, being sent down, two people uh, are being sent down this time. Uh, they are going to be uh, 
the uh, two that I remembered uh, very well, uh, uh, Hernanda and uh, Hernanda and the right behind you, Father. Aha, uh -huh. very good. Why don't you stand up? But you're going to be introduced at another time. But I want you to be known Dave. anyway already, but don't worry about that now. We want you to put down the shutters of your mind so that you can meditate and be present for the Lord when he's coming. But it's a new relationship. And if that relationship is sacramental, it's going to be something that God takes action with, the time when God works on you. Uh, and there's going to be also a confirmation from this particular parish, someone asking for confirmation, and that will intensify uh, and uh, make more uh, deep that relationship that baptism has already started. Uh, and so that relationship will always be worked on and it will become intensified uh, as you reflect on the goodness of God coming into your life and into your spirit. And that of course is true for all of us, all of us who have been baptized or brought into contact with God in an important way. Uh, and God will work on you as well as you work on God. And so we ask each other to always pray that this continue and happen for all of us so that we may become a community of baptized people, uh, encountered people, who are able to understand God and so teach God to others. And let us all say, Amen. Amen. Amen.